India has 1.4 billion people and is one of the fastest growing economies in the world. But at the same time, inequality has risen dramatically. In this story, we'll tell you about a society that's still deeply divided. According to the World Bank, the GDP per capita in India rose to 2,400 US dollars in 2022, while in China, it was 12,700 US dollars. We'll show you two sides of India. On the one hand, a businessman that reaps the fruits of Indian economic success. And on the other, a family that's still in need and lives among the poor. How unequal is India still today? And what impact does that have on people's lives? Early morning in Varanasi in the north of India, Kismati Devi prepares tea, still using firewood. She used to live in a mud house with her seven children and husband. Now they have a better house founded by the government. They're still poor, but nevertheless, her living conditions have improved a lot over the last 20 years. Things have changed now. Since my daughter's birth, we can even feed the cattle scraps of the bread we bake. We didn't even have basic amenities, so when it was hot, we used hand fans and we weren't able to sleep because of the heat. Now we have electricity in the house, we have an electric fan and we have light. Rush hour in Delhi and in the barber business. Just the ones who can afford it come to him. Jawad Habib is a shooting star. He owns his own nationwide brand with more than 900 franchises. His idea has made him a rich man. The 60-year-old businessman first started working in his father's hair salon. Well, that thing. I studied French because I never wanted to take over my father's business. I wanted to do hotel management, so I went to JN University. And then I was sent to London to learn the barber business there. At that time, I was working in McDonald's as a student. And it was there that I realized that I wanted to become the McDonald's of hairstyling. That's why he started his franchise business. Back to Varanasi, which is also the constituency of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Millions of people in India still live like this, the largest number of poor worldwide is in India. Experts say the subsidies these people get from the government are not enough. Indian society is divided. 63 million Indians are pushed into poverty every year because they can't afford health care costs. It would take 941 years for a minimum wage worker in rural India to earn what a top executive at a leading Indian garment company earns in one year. At the same time, there are 119 billionaires in India. There were only nine in the year 2000. From 2018 to 22, India was producing 70 new millionaires every single day. I think there's no doubt that inequality has increased dramatically in the last 20 years. And that is a function of the kind of economic growth that we've had. So earlier, we certainly had inequality of many different kinds, by class, caste, gender, location, and so on. But now we've had an extreme accentuation of these. And particularly in the last decade, the incomes and assets of the top 10% of the country, the top 1% of the country, have exploded. Back to the family in Varanasi. Mother and daughter are speaking to family members that moved to the city. Education here is key. It's also why the youngest daughter is so keen to empower the children in the village so that they'll have a better life later on. She started teaching the girls thanks to an NGO. Nevertheless, she continued her own studies and wants to make a difference in her family. When I wasn't working, my parents used to pressure me about marriage. But since I joined an NGO and began earning money, nobody asks me about marriage anymore. And I'm also not interested in it at the moment. That's the same in almost all the poor families. The family members have to contribute to the family income. 
In rich families, the parents don't depend on the children. They send them abroad for their studies. Like Jawed Habib in Delhi, for instance. He sent his kids to Europe to study abroad and has a decent life in Delhi. For the wealthy class in India, this is quite common. I've got a son. His name is Anarsh. Anarsh has also learned to cut hair, but now he handles the corporate office in Mumbai. My wife shuttles between Dubai and India. When my kids used to study in London, she used to live with them. Then my daughter settled in Dubai, and because she's still very close to us, my wife keeps shuttling between Dubai, Mumbai, and Delhi. But only a few people in India have these opportunities. And this is how the rich and middle class in India, which earn 500,000 rupees, or even more per year, grew so fast over the last nine years. The ones that grew faster than average were the middle and rich classes, not the poor ones. So if you have growth and you pay no attention to redistribution, especially in a country like India, where we are also dealing with very serious social inequalities, so you have to do something so that they're all, at the beginning of their lives, they start at the same starting point. Jawed knows about the inequality in society. He's teaching people on the margins, like this blind man. He runs seven academies and trains around 10,000 barbers per year. His mission? He wants to give something back to the country that made him a rich man. India was considered a poor country. Education has changed me a lot. It's taught me that in India, doctors and engineers are needed. However, even in this India, a barber could also become a successful brand. But what would the foundation of this success be? Education, education and education. In the village, it's time for the harvest. The main problem? The family belongs to a lower caste, and that means they don't own their own land. That always leaves them dependent on others to grow grain for food, a big reason for the inequality. My daughter works outside and helps me with weeding, planting and harvesting. My husband, my son, everyone pitches in. My son works in the city, but he still helps us. By doing this, we produce grain for ourselves and also earn a little money. That's how we survive. So we've had wage suppression and, in fact, reliance on the unpaid labour of women and the lower castes and so on. But also we've had the exploitation of, let's say, those who don't have political voice. So, for example, the traditional dwellers, the Adivasis, whose lands have been appropriated for mining, for other kinds of things. At least some things in the village have changed for the better. The government provided gas cylinders for more than 100 million families. The problem is they can't always use them due to the infrastructure and the high cost of refilling the cylinders. So they often end up using firewood. Overcoming inequality will be one of the biggest challenges for the next government and might even slow down economic growth.